Hey guys, so today, obviously, it's about the breadboard. Now, it's sort of beginning, uh, sort of, uh, somewhat a tutorial on beginner, so you want it like a beginner electronics, like you, you're a complete, you know, noob, you don't know anything. So I've already done similar ones on the transistor and stuff, but this one's really going to be focused on the beginner, whereas the other ones have been, you know, not so, not so much. Like, it's, I've assumed you guys have already had knowledge. So this is going to be a breadboard. Now, if you're a complete beginner, then you don't even know what a breadboard is or anything. So I'm going to be explaining that to you. Breadboard is basically the way you prototype circuits. Circuits are like, you know, a, a, a system of electronics that does a specific task. And that task can be anything from blinking a light to running the displays in Times Square. So, you know, so the way you would use a breadboard to prototype a relatively small circuit. Now, given, you know, you don't have much room here. But these breadboards, as you see, you can take the... Uh, the breadboards, these power strips on the sides, I'll explain them later, but they sort of, you, you see, you can snap power strips and other breadboards in and out of these full size. These are standard, standard, so most breadboards you buy should be, if they look like this, they're compatible. There's ones that are like half size that are also compatible, and there's ones that are like that big, but they don't have any power rails, and those are, they, you can still put them next to each other, but they won't snap in with these little clips right there. So you use breadboards to prototype relatively simple circuits. So, um, basically what you do is if you want a breadboard to work correctly, here are the connections. All of these negative ones in this row here. So, ass assume we have one power bus, right? Let's just talk about the power rails first. I just un unsnap it. And because these are, these are the, the simplest parts of a breadboard, okay? So, you know, you notice how there's a red line and a blue line. The blue line represents where you're supposed to put your ground. It doesn't actually mean anything. You don't have to put your ground on the blue line. You can put it on the red line, but, you know, just for sake of simplicity, there's a negative there, so you might as well hook up ground. So if you hook a ground to any of these points in the lower row, the blue line represents this lower row. So if you hook up a, um, a wire or something, you can just take these standard solid core, you can only use solid core, and you can just stick them in there, and they'll, you know, they hold pretty good. You can just take them, stick them in there, and anything in this bottom row of holes, so all these holes, all these, all the holes on the bottom row are connected together, okay? Some breadboards, this one in the middle is slightly longer, and the two sides are different, but you can pretty much assume that all the holes in one row on the power rails are connected together. And then on the top, it's the same. All the holes in the top row are connected together, okay? So that's pretty simple. So that means that if I connect my ground here for my power supply and then if I connect say my uh, uh, some ground for some sensor there they'll both be connected you don't have to worry about creating any uh, extra connections from what you have now comes the fun part the actual breadboard so you see I have components on it you know no big deal that's what you do is you put components so the way the breadboard works is it has these rows with a notch in the middle okay so there is connectivity on the rows in vertical to the camera so like that is in that and let's see I can get a zoom that won't be very focused sorry for the lack of focus but it just helps that's connected second row is connected third row is connected fourth row etc right but and same thing for the top this is connected so the rows are connected vertically but they're not connected along this inner like thing you know that is inside the way that works is that this breaks the connection so these five holes are connected vertically these five are connected vertically but there's no connection between so this hole right here the uh if you can see that that hole is only connected to this one this one this one and this one no other holes Okay, and you can use a wire to connect to something else, obviously. Now, the way you would use these to prototype circuits is you would, you know, there's several components. You can put components in any way you like, be creative. But you take these ICs, right? This one's an op amp. And this, uh, this notch in the middle allows you to put ICs in so the pins don't short. If you were to put the IC in like this, right? You know, that's kind of silly because this pin right there is connected to that pin. Which is too, because what if this was your power and this was your ground? You can't short your power to your ground. But since they're both in the same vertical row, you can't do that. This notch in the middle, well, it may seem silly at first to some of you. I don't know what it did to me at the very beginning. Prevents that. So now this pin 
is not connected to this pin whatsoever, and you have a full row to attach uh, like four components, and so that's what you do. And this allows for the large ICs, the small ICs, you can take screens with pins and stick them in there, and wires and stick them in there, and so, you know, and you can just take components and stick them in, okay? Remember, there's no no horizontal connections on this main part, but the power rails there is, okay? So just remember that. So, now, that's that's really pretty much it. I would recommend you get some of these pre-cut jumper wires. They have, you know, multiple sizes, and they're solid core, already cut, so you can just stick them right in to the breadboard anywhere to create connections all over. Now, the art of laying out stuff on a breadboard is... is, is uh, it can be difficult if you have a really complicated circuit. Just make sure you have all the data sheets open on your computer at once, just like the pinouts, so it helps you have a large screen or multiple screens here. Open it once on your computer and your schematic. Schematic is a way of representing a circuit in a vis visual drawing. And you just put components in one by one. Usually if you have a microcontroller, you put it in first. You base your components around the most complicated or the sort of con controller of your design. Okay, so remember you put ICs I I I in the center. And that's that's the way a red word works. I mean, I can't really think of what else to say. If there is anything else to say, um, usually you want to put a capacitor across power and ground. Now that may, you know, you're not usually supposed to put things on power and ground. Capacitors, there's no physical connection. So it's fine to put a capacitor across power and ground. In fact, it's recommended. In fact, it's almost necessary in some cases. So just do it. 0 0.1 microfarads to, you know, 10 microfarads is usually plenty. It, you know, it, you don't need to have a 100 microfarad capacitor. That's just silly. So, that's it. Just remember that the uh, power rails are connected horizontally. All the negative, all the ones on one side are connected. All the ones on the other side are connected. And then these are connected vertically with a break in the middle. And uh, that's to allow ICs to sit in the notch. So, thanks for watching. Bye.